Lesson four. On the farm. Welcome. Today we are going to review modal auxiliaries, and these are helping verbs. The first we will review can for ability. Then we will review can for permission. Third, we will review should, and then we'll look at may and might. Finally, we will review have to and must, and then we'll look at how to use these modal auxiliaries in the passive voice. First, let's learn some new vocabulary. So we have a crop. A crop. A crop is a plant that is grown by farmers, especially in order to be eaten.、Uh, for example, wheat is a crop, and rice is a crop. A seed, a seed, a seed is a small, hard object produced by plants, and from which a new plant can be grown. The same plant can be grown from、uh, a seed. To plant. It's a verb. To plant. To plant means to put plants or seeds in the ground. A goat. A goat. A goat is a farm animal that looks a little bit like a sheep, and it usually has two horns. Next, we have a calf. A calf. A calf is a baby cow. A piglet. A piglet. Well, maybe you can guess. A piglet is a baby pig. To milk a cow. To milk a cow. To milk a cow means to get milk from a cow by pumping its udders. Okay, we'll go over here for the next ones. We have a coop. Chickens live in a coop. A barn. A barn is a large building used for keeping crops or animals in. A silo. A silo is a building that looks like a tower, and it's used to keep grain inside the tower. What's grain? Grain is the seeds of a crop,、uh, such as corn or wheat. We have a tractor. A tractor. A tractor is a strong vehicle with large wheels used for pulling farm machinery. Two more. We have hay. Hay is long grass that has been cut. And dried, and it is often used as food for farm animals. And finally, we have a pond. A pond is a small area of still water. There is usually a pond on a farm. So let's repeat these words. First, we have a crop, a seed, to plant. A goat. Here is a calf. A piglet. To milk a cow. Over here. A coop. A barn. A silo. Grain. A tractor. Hay, and a pond. Can for ability. Let's begin with a review of can for ability. So let's look at some of these sentences on the screen, the TV screen. John can drive a tractor. Chickens can't fly far. Polly can milk a cow. A farmer can plant crops. Can expresses ability. You are able to do something because of a special skill. The simple form of the verb follows can. We have can, and then we have simple 
form. So it works like this. John can, simple form, drive a tractor. John can drive a tractor. An infinitive does not follow can. John can to drive a tractor. John can to drive a tractor is incorrect. We do not want to. The main verb never has a final S. So John can drives a tractor is also incorrect. No S. And the negative of can is can't or cannot. John can apostrophe T cannot can't drive a tractor. If we make a question out of this, we simply put can or can't at the beginning of the sentence. Can't John drive a tractor? Well, let's practice these sentences now. So how is everyone today? We're all good. Fine. Good. Okay. Let's review camperability. Do any of you know a farmer? I do. My father is a farmer. My first father is a farmer. My uncle is a farmer. Great. Lewis, can your friend's farmer grow crops? Yes, he can. His word is very tall this year. Okay. Rosa, uh, your uncle, can he milk a pig? No, he can't milk a pig. People don't drink pig's milk. No, that's right. Monica, can your father cut hay? Yes, he cuts hay all the time. We have a lot of cows to feed. Thank you. And now let's look and listen. Look and listen. Mike's wife can ride a horse. A duck can swim in a pond. A goat can't lay an egg. A farmer can fill a silo with grain. Read and repeat. Can for permission. Well, now let's review can for permission. So let's look at these sentences on your TV screen. Patty can't drive the tractor. Her mother won't let her. The farmer's wife can't come to the party. Her husband wants her to help with the crops. Tommy can't milk the cows. His father says he is too young. Teddy can milk the cows. His father said he is old enough. So we also use can for permission. This means it's okay for someone to do something or someone is allowing someone to do something. We use the same rules for can permission as we do for can ability. Can plus simple form of the verb. Let's practice. Do you remember can for permission? Sure, it's easy. Good. Lewis, can your friend feed the chickens? Yes, he can. His father says it's okay. Very good. Monica, 
Can your little sister play with piglets? No, she can't. Neither can I. Our father said that it's very dangerous for us to play. I see. Rosa, can your cousins drive a tractor? No, they can't. They are too young. My aunt won't let them. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. And let's look and listen again. Look and listen. Ken can't ice skate on the farm pond. His father said the ice isn't strong enough. Our cousins can't play with the ducks. They were naughty. Mary can plant some wheat. Her father said she has time. The silo can be filled now. Farmer John says it is okay. Read and repeat. Should. Well, now let's review should. Look at the screen and follow these sentences. The farmer should plant his crops. The children shouldn't swim in the cow pond. We should buy a new cow. The tractor should have a new tire. Should means this is a good idea or this is good advice. Should is followed by the simple form of the verb, the same as can. We have should and simple form. Just like can. Okay, so if we say he should goes, this is incorrect because it's not the simple form. He should, simple form, he should go. Let's, let's do another one. Uh, infinitives also are incorrect. He should to go. It's wrong because to go is not the simple form. He should go. It's easy. Uh, we have a negative, is sh of the negative of should is should not or shouldn't. So the farmer, the farmer, and then we'll put it here, shouldn't, the farmer shouldn't plant, simple form, his crops. And we can begin, the same as can, we can begin questions with the word should. The farmer shouldn't, shouldn't, the farmer, shouldn't the farmer get up? We can also begin questions with question words followed by should. So we could say where should we put the chickens? Where should we put the chickens? Just one more time, remembering he should go, not goes. He should to go, no, he should go. The farmer shouldn't plant his crops. Shouldn't the farmer get up? Where should we put the chickens? And let's review should. Okay, Lewis, what do you think a farmer should always do? A farmer should always care of his animals. Cows, chickens, and sheep are always important on a farm. You're right. What shouldn't a farmer do, Monica? You answer this one. 
A farmer shouldn't let his children ride with him on a tractor. My father says that is very dangerous. He's right. And what should a farmer's children do, Rosa? They should help their father. They can pick fruit off the trees. They can get vegetables from the garden. Very good. And what should a teacher do? A teacher should always help the students. You're a good teacher. Oh, thank you, Monica. Thank you, everyone. Let's look and listen one more time. Look and listen. We should put some oil in the tractor. Greg should clean the silo when it is empty. They should collect the eggs from the chicken coop. A farmer shouldn't be lazy. Read and repeat. May. Okay, now let's review May. Look at these sentences on your screen. May I feed the calves? Yes, you may. May Jimmy come with me to feed the calves? No, he may not. He is frightened of them. We use may in polite questions and answers. We use it to ask for permission. It means the same thing as can for permission. May I, may I use your car? And can I use your car is the same thing. The negative of may is may not. There is no mayn't form. That like we have can, cannot, can't, but may, may not, no mayn't. Just may not. Let's practice may, shall we? Let's use may or may not in some sentences. Now, we can pretend that I am the farmer's son and you three are my parents. Okay, Lewis, may I swim in the pond? No, you may not. The water is very dirty. Mm, okay. Rosa, may I milk the cows? Yes, you may. You are old enough. Yay! May I play with the chickens, Monica? No, you may not. You will frighten them. They will not lay eggs. Oh, okay. Good answers. And let's look and listen. Look and listen. May Bobby ride the horse with me? Yes, he may. He is good with horses. May Kathy feed the ducks with Kelly? No, she may not. She must do her homework. Read and repeat. Well, now let's review might. So follow these sentences on your screen. The farmer might plant some rice tomorrow. Earl might not feed the calf today. Fred might go to the farmer's market later. Harold might fill the silo this fall. Okay, so might has many meanings. Might expresses a possibility in the future, or a possibility in the present. The negative form of might is might not. So like may, there is no 
mightn't. Mightn't does not exist. Only might not. You can begin questions with might, but it's not common. We could say, might the farmer uh, plant some rice tomorrow? Might the farmer plant some rice tomorrow? May can also be used instead of might. So we could say that may is the same as might for possibility. For possibility. The farmer may plant some rice tomorrow. This is the same as the farmer might plant some rice tomorrow. They are the same. Let's practice these now. Okay. Let's look at might. Monica, is your father going to plant some watermelons this spring? He might plant watermelons. He may not, though. We haven't had much luck with watermelons. Okay, very good. Rosa, your uncle, is he going to buy a new tractor? No, he doesn't have enough money. He may buy a used one. That's a good idea. Lewis, let's see, do you think your friend will become a farmer one day? No, he doesn't want to be a farmer. He can speak English. He might be a lawyer. He might be a doctor. That's good. English is important. Okay, everybody, let's look and listen. Look and listen. Jerry might not cut the hay today. We might buy some small fish to put in the cow pond. The farmer might build a new barn this spring. He may paint it red. Read and repeat. Must and have to. Well, now we will review must and have to. Must and have to have the same meaning. Something is very important or something is very necessary. It means you do not have a choice. And like the other modal auxiliaries, must and have to is followed, must and have to are followed by the simple form of the verb. For example, he must feeds the horses is incorrect. It should be he must feed the horses. The negative of must is must not or mustn't. And the negative of have to is do not have to or don't have to. However, the negative forms have different meanings. Look at these sentences. You mustn't feed the horses. This means don't do this. And don't, you don't have to feed the horses is a different meaning. This means it's not necessary. So you mustn't feed the horses, no choice. You don't have to feed the horses, you have a choice. Okay, must, have to, and should have different meanings. I have to feed the horses means that feeding the horses is very important. I have no choice. I should feed the horses. This means that feeding the horses is a good idea. But I don't have to feed the horses. I have a choice. We can begin questions with must or mustn't. So, must 
you feed the horses? Must you feed the horses? Or we could say, mustn't you feed the horses? Mustn't you feed the horses? Questions with have to or don't have to follow this pattern. Do you have to feed the horses? Or don't you have to feed the horses. Do you have to feed the horses? Don't you have to feed the horses? Well, let's practice these. Hello again, everybody. Rosa, what do you do when you visit your uncle? I usually have to help feed the animals. I feed the chickens. I feed the cow's hay. Okay, that's good. And Lewis, what do you do when you visit your friend? I don't have to do anything. My friend's father has many helpers. He wants his son to go to the university. Very good. Monica, I'm sure you always help your father. Yes, I have many jobs. I must weed the garden. I have to brush the horses. I have to feed the cows. But I don't have to use the tractor. It's too dangerous. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. And now, again, let's look and listen. Look and listen. John mustn't go in the barn. Kevin has to clean the chicken coops. A farmer must plant his crops in the spring. Must we milk the cows today? Read and repeat. Ought to. Okay, now let's learn ought to. Uh, look at these sentences on the screen. Vera ought to get some eggs from the chicken coop. The children ought to study before they ride the horses. The farmer ought to plant wheat this month. And Peter ought to clean the barn. Well, ought to has the same meaning as should. It means that something is a good idea to do. We don't usually use ought to in the negative or in a question form. And like all the other modals, ought to is followed by a simple form of the verb. For example, she ought to goes to the chicken coop to she ought to goes to the chicken coop is of course wrong because this is not a simple form of the verb just go she ought to go to the chicken coop okay let's practice let's make sentences using ought to what should a farmer's children do they ought to help in the garden Having a good garden is important and it'll top work. Great. Rosa. They ought to help their mother cook. Farmers and farmers' helpers are always hungry. Excellent. They ought to help cook. A uh, good answer. And Monica. They ought to feed the chickens, pigs and ducks. Those are my jobs. They're fun. Thank you. Good job, everybody. Let's look and listen. Look and listen. The farmer 
ought to fix his tractor. Mo ought to feed his pigs more often. Gloria ought to make two cakes for the farmer's ball. Jack ought to fill the silos. Read and repeat. Be able to. Well, now let's look at be able to. Let's read these sentences from the screen. A farmer is able to grow crops. A farmer is able to fix his tractor. Most farmers aren't able to pilot an airplane. He isn't able to paint the barn. He has a bad leg. To be able to means to have the ability to do something. It's the same as can for ability. The negative is not be able to. Oops. And you may ask a question with be able to like this. Is he able to plant the crops? Is he able to plant the crops or the negative? Isn't he able to plant the crops? Isn't he able to plant the crops? It's the same as can. Can he plant the crops? Can't he plant the crops? Let's practice. Let's look at be able to. Rosa, is a farmer able to grow wheat? Yes, he is able to. Of course, he must have a good soil. You're right. Monica, is your father able to grow rice? No, he isn't able to grow rice. There isn't enough rain. Good answer. Lewis, is a farmer able to play tennis? I'm sure a farmer is able to play tennis. A farmer is always busy. He probably doesn't have much time. Good. Let's look and listen. Look and listen. Craig isn't able to paint his silo. Kevin is able to grow soybeans. He isn't able to grow apples or pears. The farmer isn't able to buy a new tractor. Read and repeat. Passive with modal auxiliaries. Let's look at some modal auxiliaries using the passive voice. Take a look at these sentences on your screen. A new chicken coop should be built. A new chicken coop could be built. The barn should be painted. The barn could be painted. Now, to form the passive voice using modals, we use this form. Modal plus B plus past participle. Past participle. Right, so a new chicken coop 
a rough room there. A new chicken coop modal should be in the past participle built. The negative form is a new chicken coop shouldn't be built. Positive, a new chicken coop should be built. Negative, a new chicken coop shouldn't be built. The question forms are should a new chicken coop be built? Should a new chicken coop be built? Should comes to the first position. And the negative simply shouldn't. Shouldn't a new chicken coop be built. Should a new chicken coop be built? Shouldn't a new chicken coop be built? Let's practice. Have a look at this picture. What do you think about this farm, Luis? I think the calves should be fed. They are waiting. Very good. Monica, what do you think? I think the pond could be filled. It's almost empty. Mm, I agree. Rosa, what do you think? I think a new tractor should be bought. That tractor looks very bad. Great answers, everyone. Thank you very much. It's time for our great look and listen. Look and listen. The barn could be painted. Some grain should be bought. The seeds could be planted over there. The peppers should be picked. Read and repeat. Review. Let's do some exercises now. Let's fill in the blanks using can or can't, and you guys can tell me if it's for ability or for permission. Mm -hmm. Lewis, can you do this one, please? Andy, something, get eggs from the chicken coop. He's allergic to feathers. Andy. Something, get eggs in the chicken coop, he's allergic to feathers. And the can't get eggs from the chicken coop, he's allergic to feathers. I use can't. Excellent. Andy can't get eggs from the chicken coop, he is allergic to feathers. Monica, mm -hmm. here's one for you. Steve is a good farmer. He, something, drive a tractor. Well, what do you think, Monica? Steve is a good farmer. He can drive a tractor well. Excellent. I use can for ability here. Steve is a good farmer. He can drive a tractor well. Ability. I can for ability. Good. Okay, Rosa. Something. A farmer. Plant crops. What do you think? You can use both. Can a farmer plant crops or can't a farmer plant crops? Okay, good. Can or can't. Or can't. Can a farmer plant crops? Can't a farmer plant crops. Let's do another exercise. Let's make sentences using should or shouldn't. Rosa, you can give me three sentences about a farmer. 
Monica, three sentences about a farmer's wife, mm -hmm. and Lewis, three sentences about a farmer's children. Okay? Okay, Rosa. A farmer shouldn't hit his animals. A farmer should fill his silos in the fall. A farmer should milk the cow. His cows. Yeah, his cows. Very good, okay. A farmer shouldn't hit his animals. A farmer should fill his silos in the fall. A farmer should milk his cows. Excellent. Your sentence is Monica? Um, a farmer's wife should cook good meals for her husband. A farmer's wife shouldn't drive a tractor. And a farmer's wife should, should help her husband milk the cows. Great. A farmer's wife should cook good meals for her husband. A farmer's wife shouldn't drive a tractor. A farmer's wife should help her husband milk the cows. And your sentence is Luis. A farmer's children should help their parents. A farmer's children should get the eggs from chicken coop. From the chicken coop, from good. The chicken coop. A farmer's children shouldn't play with the pigs. Good job, okay. A farmer's children should help their parents. A farmer's children should get the eggs from the chicken coop. A farmer's children shouldn't play with the pigs. Good job, everybody. And now let's do another exercise. This time we'll use may or might. Now, let's pretend Lewis is a farmer and you are his children, okay? Use, uh, ask questions using may. Okay. May I feed the ducks? Yes, you may. May I paint the barn? No, you may not. You're too young. Very good. Very fatherly, Lewis. Okay, now let's all pretend your father, uh, your farmers. And what are you going to do next week? I might dig a new pound for the ducks. The cow pound is so dirty. I may cut the hay. It's too long. I may not do anything. My uncle is a farmer. He can do the work. <laughs> You're very funny, Rosa. Okay, it's time to do an exercise using have to or must. So, fill in the blanks with the appropriate verb of have to or must. Monica, you can go first. Okay. It is almost May. The farmer something his Wheat. It's almost May. The farmer must plant his wheat. Good. Must plant. It's almost May. The farmer must plant his wheat. Okay. Lewis, this one's for you. It is only March. The farmer something his wheat yet. It's only March. The farmer doesn't have to plant his wheat yet. Good. Doesn't have to plant. It's only March. The farmer doesn't have to plant his wheat yet. And now your turn. Last one for you, Rosa. The farmer, something, feed the horses, they are hungry. The farmer has to feed the horses, they are hungry. Good. The farmer has to feed the horses, they are hungry. Great job, everybody. Let's do an exercise using ought to. Let's use ought to in sentences about farm animals. Uh, say one sentence each and use ought to. Lewis, what's your sentence? A pig ought to eat a lot, then he'll be fat and there will be more meat for the farmer. That's a good sentence. Rosa? Chickens ought to lay a lot of eggs, then there will be a lot of chicklets. Good, but a baby chicken is called a chick. Okay. Okay, it's piglet, but chick. Good. Your sentence, Monica? 
There ought to be many cats in the barn. They catch mice. Mice are bad. Yes, you're right. Great job. Now let's try an exercise using be able to. So let's make one sentence each. Uh, tell me what a farmer's children aren't able to do. Okay? Monica, you go first. A farmer's children aren't able to fill a silo. It's their father's job. Good sentence. Lewis? A farmer's children aren't able to make the cows. They aren't old enough. Okay, and you, Rosa? A farmer's children aren't able to cut the hay. Great, thank you everyone. Now, one last exercise using a modal auxiliary and the passive voice. Let's make a sentence about farmers in your country. Rosa, you can go first. Farmers could be paid more by the government for their products. Farmers are poor in my country. That's mixed, yeah. Good, okay, Monica? Farmers should be helped more by their neighbors. It's very difficult to build a barn alone. Um, transportation is very bad in Poland, and sometimes it's very difficult for neighbors to help. Okay, mm, and you, Lewis? New silos should be built. Um, there is a lot of wheat and corn in Portugal, but there is sometimes no place to put it. Very good answers. Thank you very much, everybody. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write. Listen and write these sentences. Number one. Albert can't drive the tractor. His leg is broken. Number two. Robert can feed the goats. His mother gave him permission. Number three. They shouldn't fish in the cow pond. Number four. Ron should build another silo. Number five. May I play in the barn? Number six. Might I pick some watermelons from your garden? Number seven. They mustn't cut the hay. Number eight. We have to feed the calves. Number nine. That horse should be brushed. Number ten. Pete ought to paint his farmhouse. Now check your work. Number one. Albert can't drive the tractor. His leg is broken. Number two. Robert can feed the goats. His mother gave him permission. Number three. They shouldn't fish in the cow pond. Number four. Ron should build another silo. And number five. May I play in the barn? Number six. Might I pick some watermelons from your garden? Number seven. They mustn't cut the hay. Number eight. We have to feed the calves. Number nine. That horse should be brushed. Number 10. Pete ought to paint his farmhouse. Now read the story and answer the questions. Read and answer. Hank is a farmer in England. He has a beautiful wife, Maureen. They have five children. Hank is lucky because Maureen can take care of the children and can help him sometimes too. They have a big farm, but Hank thinks it ought to be bigger. He thinks they should buy their neighbor's farm. He wants to grow more wheat. 
He might make an offer if his neighbor isn't asking too much. If he is able to buy the farm, he must borrow money from his father-in-law. New barns should be built. New crops should be grown. New tractors must be bought. Hank will probably have to borrow $25,000 to make it a nice farm. Maureen worries about her husband. She thinks he shouldn't work so much. He works 16 hours a day. The children can't help much. She won't let them because they are too young. Maureen believes Hank doesn't have to buy the neighbor's farm. They're doing well with the farm they have. Now answer the questions. Number one. Where is Hank and Maureen's farm? Number two. Why is Hank lucky? Number three. What does Hank think he should buy? Number four, why does he want to buy it? Number five, if he is able to buy the farm, who must he borrow money from? Number six, what must be done at the new farm? Number seven, how much money will Hank have to borrow? Number eight. Why does Maureen worry about Hank? Number nine. How many hours does Hank work each day? And number ten. Does Maureen want Hank to buy the neighbor's farm? Now check your answers. Number one, where is Hank and Maureen's farm? Their farm is in England. Number two, why is Hank lucky? He is lucky because Maureen can take care of the children and help him too. Number three, what does Hank think he should buy? He thinks he should buy the neighbor's farm. Number four, why does he want to buy it? He wants to grow more wheat. Number five, if he is able to buy the farm, who must he borrow money from? He must borrow money from his father-in-law. Number six, what must be done at the new farm? New barns should be built. New tractors should be bought. A new barn should be built. Number seven, how much money will Hank have to borrow? He will have to borrow $25,000. Why does Maureen worry about Hank? She thinks he works too much. Number nine, how many, how many hours does Hank work each day? He works 16 hours each day. Number 10. Does Maureen want Hank to buy the neighbor's farm? No, she doesn't. See you next time. Practicing English. Hey Monica, have you ever lived or worked on a farm before? In fact, I have. Why do you ask? Well, in my class today, one of my students asked me if I ever milked a cow, fed chickens, or raised farm animals before. Why did your student ask you those questions? We were talking about growing up, and I told him I'd live, always lived in a small city. You know, I've never lived on a farm or in the country. So, Monica, can you tell me about some of your farm experiences? Sure. What do you want to know? Well, whose farm was it? Was it fun or boring? And did you have to do chores? Well, I could tell you a lot about farm life because I spent seven summers at my Uncle Henry's farm in Vermont. Okay, Monica, I really want to know. What was a typical day like on your uncle's farm? Well, on a farm, there's jobs to do for everyone. For example, the day begins early. Every morning, my Aunt Joyce would say, 
Now Monica. You ought to be careful around those cows before they're milked. They can kick. Oh, that's nice. Getting kicked by a bull while you're trying to milk her. Mmm, Carrie, you don't milk bulls. They're male. Only female cows give milk. Uh, yeah. I should have known that. But I told you, I've never been on a farm before. So, go on, sorry. Tell me more. Well, after milking the cows, we had a lot of other animals to feed. We had a lot of chickens to feed. Did you get to read one of those, you know, what do you call them, plower things? Do you mean a tractor, Carrie? Yeah, that's it. Did you get to ride a tractor? Yes, I've driven a tractor before. Monica, I have to ask you. My class is all people who are born in the city. They have never been on a farm before. Will you come and tell some farm stories to my class? Farm stories? Yeah. Can you tell them about milking bulls, uh, cows, feeding chickens, stuff like that? Should I dress in overalls and carry a pitchfork that day? Do you have one? A pitchfork, I mean. Carrie, are you joking? Okay, how about overalls then? Are you for real? Yes, Monica, please. My class would love to hear your stories. Okay, what day do you want me to come? How about tomorrow? I will tell them this afternoon that we'll have a guest speaker and then you can come and tell them about your farm days and picking wild fowls, skipping through meadows and other farm-like things. You really can't believe I was a farm girl once, can you? I do believe you, but you've never told us about this part of your life before. I think it's interesting. Well, hopefully your students will find my stories interesting too. Oh, don't worry. I will be there that day in case they're quiet. And I have a lot more questions myself. You do? Like what? Well, what's it like seeing baby animals being born? I saw our dog having puppies once and it was disgusting. Well, on a farm you see animals being born all the time. I've seen calves and lambs being born. You really ought to see that. It's amazing. No, thank you. Everything comes out looking all wet and slimy. That's really gross. Carrie, you'd make a terrible farm girl. I know. I'm more of a shopping and mall girl. Okay, so I'll come to your class and talk to them about my farm days when I was a girl. What will you be doing when I'm talking to them? Hmm, don't worry. I'll be listening to their questions. And as I said, I might add a few of my own. Please, Carrie, I'll do this for you, but please don't ask any embarrassing questions in front of the class. I wouldn't do anything like that. Trust me, I'm an English teacher. <laughs>